once heard a fable that a cow jumped over the moon. Well, today I'm over the moon for today's field trip. We're going to the MVP Dairy Farms. Where are we today? We are actually at MVP Dairy and we are um, standing outside the Dairy Learning Center. So I'm Allison Ryan and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for the team here at MVP. So with that, uh, part of my job is um, hosting groups to come through our um, Dairy Learning Center. So anyone um, that's either driving by or we've done a lot of school groups, a lot of community groups, 4-H, they're all welcome to come in and see a little bit more about Dairy's story from, um, in our case, soil to yogurt cup. MVP stands for the McCarty Van Tilburg Partnership. So the McCarty family is originally from Kansas. Up until about 2000, they were milking 200 cows in Pennsylvania. Today, they have uh, four farms out west and MVP is their newest dairy. They were looking to get a little bit closer to the Dannon plant in Minster uh, because of a pre-existing relationship with Dannon from out west. Now, the Van Tilburgs are originally grain farmers. In 2016, Dannon put out a pledge that was looking to source their, their milk and products from farmers that were focusing on what you would call regenerative agricultural practices. And so at that time, the Van Tilburgs were already doing a lot of those practices, but they weren't involved in dairy. So both the McCarty family and the Van Tilburg family were actually um, looking at the same empty dairy. It was a dairy that was no longer in business. They were looking to purchase this farm. Well, they met, they got along, and fast forward a couple of years, and they decided to partner and build MVP Dairy together. Here we are. So, and here we are. You guys have a really great interactive setting here. So is this geared towards kids or geared towards anybody? It, a little bit of both. The um, game over here that's shaped like a milk carton. Mm -hmm. So the story that I kind of told you about the McCarty's, it's a touch screen interactive game. So if you're a McCarty, you um, milk the cows. If you're a Van Tilburg, you harvest the corn and then together you can drag and drop and build the dairy together. The idea was to create an interactive space that everyone, um, you know, everyone learns a little bit differently. So here we go. We only produce milk here, so from here it will go to the Dannon plant, and so from from here that's where some additional safety checks happen. There's that's where it's also going to be pasteurized, um, homogenized, and standardized, um, and then that's when um, the cultures are added and the, the yogurt's actually made. At any given time, there are 80 cows on the carousel at one time. Basically, they go on and off the carousel pretty well at their own will. You see all the ladies on deck out there, so um, they, they come in from the freestyle barns, they'll wait their turn. This all takes, you know, eight minutes to make a full rotation, so we get through pretty quick. The cows will enter in, and then within about 90 to 120 seconds, they'll be, um, their teeth will be washed and sanitized, and the milker will be placed on. And then she'll have that milker on, um, the entire time on her ride around. That milk that she's providing, it's being metered, so when it's below a certain threshold of flow and how quickly it's coming out, that milker will automatically detach, so that way we're making sure we're never over milking or causing any harm, so it'll automatically come off. So they know that they walk off in a way. Yeah, that's actually probably the most challenging part about this kind of um, milking parlor is some of them won't go around again. Yeah. So she won't get milked again, she'll just steal another ride around. <laughs> we do have people down there working that will assist if one of the cows is trying to sneak another ride, but for the most part, um, Dairy cows are very much creatures of habit, so once they learn it, they continue. And, and it's actually, um, that, that normal routine and consistency really provides a lot of calming and relaxation for the cows. So you hear a vacuum? That's actually going to be what keeps the milker on the cow, but that's not actually how you get the milk out. If you want to stick your finger in there, All right. it's just the gentle pulsation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I feel it. So back in the day when they used to milk cows, they could milk cows by hand about six an hour. Today we can milk nine cows a minute. Wow. So it's, <laughs> we can feed a whole lot more people yeah. um, today than what we used to be. But everyone used to have their own cow way, way, way back in the day. You got a little food court going on here? We typically, when we are open for um, visitors, we've got a cooler full of um, yogurt that people can get, that it's not it's not for sale, it's just part of the, the visit. New ones up here. They weren't even here before. The little guys come in here and just kick everyone's butt. Wow. 
Oh goodness, I'm here. This is so neat. So you guys had this developed just for your farm? So um, we did it in partnership with the American Dairy Association. So it's, mod it's modeled after our barns here. You can, you can explore. Um, there's little teardrop blowing cows up in the air that you can press buttons and learn some facts <laughs> about. Okay, there you go, walk up and tap it just like you did the flush one and a little fact will pop up. Wow, cow slots are like fingerprints. No two are alike, except in our virtual barn. Here we go! So people will ask how we know that they're happy when you open that door and you don't hear cows mooing or sounding in distress. That's a pretty good indicator. The other indicator is going to be obviously their activity levels and, and then um, milk production. Happy cows will produce high quality more milk. And our cows produce about 35% more than the national average. Hey. So they're, they're doing a good job. We're in one of our freestyle barns. We have six, six row freestyle barns here on site. So each one is very similar to each, but, but the main things that I want to point out here, so each cow has 24 hour access to feed and water. So a cow's nutrition is super important. And so it's made up of um, lots of different components, chopped up alfalfa hay, uh, the bulk of it is called corn silage, so, you know, traditionally when you see harvest decorations and you see those dried corn stalks, that's not what we feed our cows. We'll harvest the whole entire corn stalk when it's still bright green and, and has a little bit more nutrients that way. We'll chop that entire corn stalk up and then we'll pack it really, really tight in our bunker silo and within about two weeks time it'll ferment, so it'll be kind of a, like a cow sauerkraut for them to eat. So they love it. That's probably what you're smelling because it does get a little bit more potent. You'll see some ground up corn in there, um, as well as some soybean hulls. And then even um, these little guys are cotton seed. So that's the byproduct of the cotton industry. Basically after they go through and harvest the cotton, this is what's left. So instead of it going to waste or going to a landfill, the cows can eat it. And then we'll also even add some liquid whey back into their diet from the Dana plant after yogurt's made. It's the, the byproduct of the yogurt. Now, we have a, a professional um, nutritionist that'll actually formulate that diet. So he tells us, depending on how old that cow is, how much milk she's producing, we'll make sure that each pin, and that's why they're divided up and why they stay divided up, each pin actually will get a special diet to them to, to meet their needs. They'll rest for 12 to 14 hours each day. Um, they'll eat for about six to eight hours each day, and then the rest is kind of spent between hanging out with their, their herd mates or heading into the milking parlor and coming back. So they will go to the milking parlor three times each day. But when they're not in here and they're in the milking parlor, that's when we'll flush this clean and we'll add sand back into the beds and make sure it's kind of like when you stay at a hotel and you leave and you come back and it's all tidied up. Same kind of idea for the cows. Next, we're in for a sweet treat. The Lake City Creamery makes its own ice cream in-house, and today, we're gonna get a taste. Hey. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you guys we're doing? We're doing great, thanks for having Good. Us. All right, Wyatt, so tell me a little bit about, you know, the Lake City Creamery. <laughs> this is your gig, huh? Yeah, this is our gig. We've been here since 2013, so over seven years now, and we make all of our own ice cream here. We serve it in cups, or by cones, or however you want. We have sundaes, and smoothies, and we make ice cream cakes, personally, for people if they want, like, two different kinds of ice cream, you call us and we'll make the cake however you want. We can show you how we make the ice cream. Yeah, we'd love to see that. In this machine, we can make four or five of these pans at a time. They're five liter pans, so it's just over a gallon. When we first started seven years ago, this was the only machine we had. So we were constantly, I mean, we were almost making ice cream 24 hours a day. So that's what an ice cream machine looks like. So like you have, you have your hand dipped, right, which is what we do, and then you have your soft serve. Okay, so soft serve machines, they put the ice cream in and they kind of leave it and it goes all day and they run like this, right? Then you order it, then it, they pump it out and it comes out to you, right? Hand dip, they call it batch ice cream, is it just runs while it's freezing it and then it freezes it, it comes out and then we turn the machine off. And so after it comes out, then like soft serve, they serve it to you. Now we have to freeze it overnight. And so we freeze it at about 21 degrees below and then we serve it right around six to eight degrees. Temperature is a huge thing with ice cream. The problem with like when you take ice cream home, is like it's at a certain temperature, you take it out, you let it warm up, dish it, you put it back in the freezer. Well what you do with it 
is you get some water in it because it thaws out a little bit. And that's why you get ice in your ice cream at home. So how this machine works is we put it in and then we'll start spinning it. And so you spin it to put some air into it, okay? So it's gonna spin in here. Then we're gonna turn the compressor on and then these walls start to freeze. So the cream that gets to the walls that start freezing, right, then gets pushed out by these blades. So they're constantly moving until it all freezes. You see? And then we'll pump it out. The other difference between us and a lot of people is we don't put a lot of air in our ice cream. So like big manufacturers, what they will do is they put a lot of air into it. So we get probably like 30, maybe 40% over on it. We'll put in this dairy, but we actually get more dairy out, okay? But what the big companies do is they put in this ice cream and they'll get like 200% over on it because yeah. they're just putting air into it. Now you mentioned that you said this is 14%. Can you tell us what that means? So it's a 14% butter fat. That's the amount of butter fat you have in your ice cream, okay? So according to the Food and Drug Administration, you have to have 10% or more to be called ice cream, okay? If it's less than 10%, you can't call it legally ice cream. So a lot of the big chains don't use the word ice cream. They use frozen desserts or frozen treats because oh. they're actually not serving ice cream. It's less than 10%. And we try different things here. We make all sorts of different kind of ice creams, you know. People ask us to make an ice cream that they had when they were a kid, and we're like, yeah, we'll give it a try, you know. So we get to do things like that. So what kind of ice cream do you like? Well, I know I like strawberry, but it'd be cool if we did something a little special with it. My mother-in-law loves ice cream, loves ice cream with nuts in it. And if there's any fruit in it at all, she thinks it's the worst thing in the world. So you see what I mean? That's that's how people are. Everybody has different different flavors. You know what I mean? Some people like you. You probably like fruit ice cream. You like strawberry, right? Yeah. So you can even try a peach. You yeah. Know? You want to try the? It's peach. really good. I cook down the peaches in some cinnamon and brown sugar, and it turns out really good. Yeah, that's real peaches. That's, yeah. That's this is our most popular and our best seller. This is Buckeye ice cream that has honey, and then we melt in the chocolate. And it's real rich and heavy. We also make one that's a real big seller, and it's called Salty Caramel. Oh, my mom loves that one. So this one actually has to be killed, kept colder than the rest, because it'll melt the rest. Well, it's definitely colder. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a robust. Yeah, so this is another caramel, but it's dull simulation. So we caramelize sweet milk. Well, you'd be like, well, they're the same but you'll find out they're not, you know, because it's a different kind of car that we make. Like, that's a little bit more creamy and lighter. You know I love I mean? that. What is that one? Dulce de Leche. That's the best one I've had today. Yeah, and that's, that's a big hit with a lot of people. Yeah. So a small is two rolls, a medium is four, and a large is six. Wow. So in a six, you can get six different flavors if you want. That's insane. Yeah. Of course, the biggest question, what's your favorite flavor? Oh, goodness. Um, I like a lot of them. My favorite is a specialty flavor that we have every so often. It's called Black Raspberry Ripple. So it's a raspberry ice cream, and then we have a raspberry puree that we've mixed throughout of it, and that's my absolute favorite. We were very fortunate. We got nominated to be on the Ohio Ice Cream Trail, and basically, there's about 15 stores in the whole state of Ohio that you can go and visit, and they're part of the Ice Cream Trail. But yeah, we were very proud that we actually made the top 15. Well guys, this is our last stop on our virtual field trip. I hope you've had an amazing time and you've learned so much. I hope you keep on imagining your own story and checking out some books at the library. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.